good afternoon. <laughs> Girl, I don't think that's going to work. Is it? Do you have one? Hold on. Does that one work? There you go. Okay. You can hear me. You might not be able to see me. Um, <laughs> uh, as I, <laughs> welcome to the uh, city council meeting for Monday, February 21st, 2012. Uh, for anybody that is watching online, um, we are having some technical difficulties. There was a power outage that affected some of the systems in uh, city council chambers. So we're going to be going with some handheld microphones. Uh, all the voting systems are still working. And uh, we'll, so if everybody can just sort of bear with us as we try to accommodate our technology here. But I will call the city council meeting to order. And uh, I'd ask everyone if they could rise and join us in singing O Canada. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio rendition. So we would uh, start with the motion for the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Um, I see Councillor Rice in the queue. Councillor Rice? I move adoption of the minutes of the city council meeting held February 6, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, I'd look for a motion for the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. <clears throat> I would move the council adopt the agenda uh, as presented with the addition of 9.61, multi-year engineering consultant services, and uh, 9.62, um, 100th Avenue bridge rehab tender. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. So the m adoption of the agenda with those additional items, 9.6.1 and 9.6.2. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. And so that would bring us to the delegation portion of our agenda. Uh, an opportunity for anybody that uh, wanted to address council on any community matter to come forward, uh, as long as that matter isn't uh, a part of a um, uh, public hearing, of which actually we have no public hearings tonight, so it looks like pretty much anything is open. Uh, so if anybody would like to come forward to address council, uh, you can make your way up here, and I think our microphone in the center still works, 
And if you'd like to come forward and introduce yourself for the uh, city clerk. Come on down. I see some guys coming down. And Cyril, sorry, could you grab me the, the uh, there's another mic stand there. If you, would you mind bringing that up, bringing that around for me so I'd have something to, thank you. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, I'm Scott Rossler uh, with Focus Corporate, right here representing Focus Corporation, and Cameron Schmidt is with me as well. Um, we have, we just have a, we, this was intended to go to public works this morning, but we, we were unable to speak on behalf of that, so uh, we just wanted to provide some information. Uh, and, and we had some concerns with, with uh, an evaluation that, that had happened on a recent proposal. So uh, just give you some background. Focus and GPEC Consulting has been a mainstay in the Grand Prairie engineering industry for 35 years uh, or more. Uh, this is one of the largest municipal rehabilitation projects that's ever been put to proposal by the City of Grand Prairie, being the 2012 to 2014 uh, rehabilitation program. For this reason, Focus has concerns with the recommendations put forward by administration. Uh, I do have a chart here, and I can, we can hand it out if, if necessary, uh, just outlining the uh, just a summary of the differentials calculated through the city evaluation. So, um, based on and, and not all of this is public, so our portion of it we're we're making public, I guess today. Uh, recommended uh, the recommended firm evaluated at a total of 85.44 points. Uh, we evaluated at 85.17. I think that was well heard this morning at the Public Works Committee. So the differential in the evaluation was 0 0.27 percent. Uh, the fee proposal differential was $193,000. Um, what this, you can work the math backwards on the evaluation and come up with uh, uh, a technical evaluation for uh, the recommended firm at 51.6 and uh, a technical evaluation for focus at 45.2. So the differential in fee was made up in the, in the technical component. Uh, focus had, has successfully completed a multitude of projects within the City of Grand Prairie, including the 2008 to 2010 sidewalk program the 2011 sidewalk program, the 98th Street upgrades in front of City Hall, uh, 92nd Street upgrades in front of Cobblestone Court, uh, all in the past five years, and, and there's many more, but we, we'll leave it at that. Uh, we've also recently been awarded the 2012 to 2014 sidewalk program, in which we were evaluated 15 points higher than the second evaluated proponent. Our fees on the project were comparable to the last four years of the program, in which we completed within, within projected capital budgets. Focus has not requested a scope change or increase in fees on any of the above projects and has delivered all projects within identified capital budgets. We have debriefed with engineering on all of the above projects as well as several others that we have not been successful on and have improved the, the quality of our proposals with each submission. Focus has qualified for price opening on every project since the introduction of the two envelope system and has achieved evaluations as high as 92 points which to my knowledge is the highest evaluated proposal ever submitted under the system. The City of Grand Prairie has implemented consultant evaluations at the completion of capital projects as well. Recent ratings of focus from the engineering department have been high. Uh, Alberta Transportation recently evaluated focus at a 4.55 out of 5, 3.0 being the average, which is the highest in the province. To qualify for the price opening, proponents are required to obtain 70% of the technical points available. This equates to 42 points out of a possible 60. All, as is shown in the above calculation, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, we received a technical evaluation of 45 points. So what that boils down to is focus was nearly deemed not qualified to complete the subject work. Uh, in our ongoing commitment to quality, we place a substantial effort into this proposal and feel it was one of the strongest that we've ever submitted. The evaluation has us confused and concerned as the dif difference in fees is a substantial amount of funds taken from capital budgets. Focus is qualified to complete this work, much the same as our previous projects within the city, and $193,000 would fund the engineering and construction of three additional blocks in the city sidewalk program. Focus is proud to be a member of the business community in Grand Prairie and is committed to delivering professional services in a safe and efficient manner. We have adjusted the council's recommendation to increase the fee component of proposals and feel we have provided a fair value proposition to the City of Grand Prairie. We would deliver this project on time and on budget, much the same as past projects. We're successful business within the city and intended on this being a successful project in partnership with the city. We have reduced our margins and rates to a level that we are comfortable with and are fully capable of delivering the project within budget. We had assembled as part of our proposal 
a team of four professional engineers and a senior resident inspector, each having greater than 10 years local municipal experience. Our team also included the field manager from the successful 2006 to 2010 city rehab program. With the above credentials and our track record on city evaluations, it's difficult to perceive how this technical evaluation could place focus on the verge of technical disqualification. We have continually improved our evaluations with the city and questioned the merit of the abnormally low rating. We will be debriefing within the next few days with the city engineering department, but would request council's assistance in ensuring the integrity of this evaluation process. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Rossler. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Uh, are there any questions for the delegation? So this was an item that uh, was one of the additional items from our public works committee meeting this afternoon. Uh, any questions for the delegation? Sure, Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Scott, you're lowering the price. Um, was there anything, did you get everything in there that the city asked for? Did, like, you know, would there be anything you might have missed? Or is it all, was it all included? what the city wanted or, you know? As far as we're aware, um, we've been through, looked at it since then, and, and as far as we're aware of the, everything that was in there was, was, was re that was required was in the proposal. Um, obviously, we, we don't know because we haven't debriefed, so we don't know why the abnormal rating. That's, mm -hmm. I guess, where we're, what we're trying to figure out. Um, none of that information is, is available to us at this point, so. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Any further questions for the delegation? If not, then Mr. Rossler, is there anything else that you wanted to add or was that, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to cover? Uh, no, I think that's good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much for attending today. Um, so this is the delegation portion of our agenda. As I said, an opportunity for anybody that wanted to come forward to address council on any community related matter. I'd uh, ask again if there's anybody else that wanted to come forward. Um, and yeah, yep, sure, please. So uh, please, we'd be pleased to welcome you. Have a seat and introduce yourself. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. My name is Ian Ketchum. I'm with uh, Barstow Laners Ketchum Engineering. And I felt I should come here today uh, knowing that the score was so close. I just wanted to make sure I uh, let you understand how seriously we take this, uh, this whole process and, um, and that we're totally qualified and, and ready to proceed with this project. Um, the RFP involves basic, a very specific guideline which the City of Grand Prairie laid out for every firm to try to meet those expectations in that they also have a very specific review process. Um, the, view, the review process is uh, in essence a report card. It's not based just on price. It involves a lot of other factors. Some of those factors are knowledge of, uh, knowledge of the project, past experience, staff, and scheduling and methodology. So what I wanted to let people know is this was a very clear and concise process and there is a reason I believe that our firm came out uh, quite a bit ahead on the technical side. We knowingly priced on our past experience of what would be required. <clears throat> At the end of the day, through a very specific review process, our firm got the highest mark on this RFP and uh, accordingly we should be awarded. Uh, and another thing of note is, of course, we were the ones that did the past road rehab and overlay program, and everything fell within budget. There was actually quite a bit of extra work that was added out of scope from the RFP, and we completed all that in a timely process and received a very high review mark from the City of Grand Prairie staff. BLK has also been opened on every proposal they've submitted, and we have finished in the top two in every one of them. Um, so I just wanted to come here today and let you, let you know that we uh, feel we're completely qualified and should be awarded accordingly. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much, Mr. Ketchum. Uh, any questions for the delegation? Okay. Seeing none, thanks very much for your presentation and get, making the time to be here in the early afternoon with Council. Um, <coughs> is there anyone else that would like to address Council on any community-related matter? We've asked a couple of times. I don't see anybody else coming forward, and so we would uh, move on from there. Um, I don't know if we were, uh, to my council members on my left side there, are you guys okay with that one microphone? Are we okay with that? Don't hog it. Don't hog it, Councillor Radburn. Okay, okay. 
Uh, so we'll move on uh, from our delegation portion. Uh, we had no public hearings and we have no unfinished business. Uh, we'll move right on into the report section of our uh, agenda with item 8.1, a land use bylaw amendment. And uh, we'll look for uh, introduction from administration. Ms. Norris Kirk, I think you're going to need to borrow the uh, microphone there as well. But well, we, we uh, and the reason that we are sharing the microphones is because I believe it. Uh, if you're not speaking on the microphone, it won't be picked up on the, the video, which is archived. So, okay, everybody, hear me now. You bet. Okay, um, I'd like to introduce uh, the report for an amendment to the land use bylaw to rezone a uh, parcel of land in the northwest quarter section from urban reserve to general residential, combined density residential, medium density residential, and public service district. It is recommended that City Council gives bylaw C-1100-180 first reading and establishes Monday, March 19, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. in the Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for the public hearing. Okay, thanks very much, Ms. Norris-Kirk. Um, so business arising, Council, and really at this point we're just talking about date, time, and location. So Councillor Rice? I, just a, a question on, uh, Urban Reserve is a very strange designation. Why would this have been designated Urban Reserve in the first place? That's typically the practice of uh, zoning land that hasn't been designated for a specific use. Okay. It's more like a holding zone until they know what they want to do with that land. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks very much. So, Councillor Rice, would you care to make that motion on date, time, and location? Sure, I would move oh, sorry, that. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Thanks very much. Uh, motion for first reading. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I would move first reading of bylaw C1100180. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So, a motion for first reading. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, Councillor Rice. I would establish, move Council establish Monday, March 19th, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. in Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for a public hearing. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion to date, time, and location of that public hearing? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. So that would bring us to item 8.2, an appointment to the Disabled Transportation Society Board. Uh, I've made a recommendation of a council member that uh, is able to take on that assignment. I wonder if somebody would be willing to uh, make that motion to appoint Councillor Kevin O'Toole to, as council representative on the DTS board. Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move that council appoint Councillor Kevin O'Toole to the Disabled Transportation Society Board of Directors. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. So that will bring us into our committee business, and we'll start off with the Municipal Government Day team. And Councillor O'Toole, I believe that was you. If you, one of your colleagues can find you a microphone there. I'm going to move over beside you here, partner. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mayor Given. We had a council, I would like to council received the minutes for the Municipal Government Day Team Committee being held on February 3rd, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, motion for the minutes. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Okay. And that motion carries. Council O'Toole. Uh, like uh, 9.1.2, uh, Municipal Government Day theme recommendation. Council approve the Love Grand Prairie Day for 2012 Municipal Government I, Day. Uh, Council O'Toole, sorry, I think there are, do we have two sets of minutes there? No. Okay. It's three. Sorry. Uh, day, date and location, I think, was the first one that we have in our list before yeah. theme. And that would be uh, May 30th, 2012, at Muskocipi Park. Okay. So we'll do the, the motion on the date and location first. Great. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so any discussion or debate on the date and location of Municipal Government Day? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, Councillor Tool. Okay, just to speak on that, if you don't mind, uh, Love of Grand Prairie Day will we'll have a youth contest 
and uh, just some of the items that we've got planned. Uh, student involvement. We are working with the Centre of Creative Arts to have art contests in two age categories, uh, K and under, uh, colouring and grade ones through three. I would like to see drawing an original picture related to the theme. Administration is partnering with the public and separate school boards to have students do an I Love Grand Prairie presentation in a digital format using PowerPoint or Prezi. Uh, also, grades 4 to 9 will produce a 10 to 20 slide pr uh, presentations with original images and grade 10 through 12 will produce a 3 minute movie. And we have worked with school boards to develop a contest where best presentations would be judged and uploaded to a website. Prices, prizes will also be awarded. Uh, through the workshop that the Love of the Cities had here earlier in the spring, or winter, I guess it is. You would think it's spring. Uh, the Youth Council is working with us to have chalk art competition in conjunction with the mother and daughter who initiated the idea at the Love of the Cities workshop. Also, Amazing Race, we are again partnering with the Grand Prairie Get Active Network to present the Municipal Olympics as well as the Community Amazing Race Team event. This will again involve fun activities with council and regional municipal reps doing a mini version of what participants from the community are doing. Uh, for the community event, teams comprised of families and work groups will again compete for medals. <coughs> One of the suggestions that came up was hands around the pond. In the light of this theme, this year has suggested a new event to wrap up Municipal Government Day is to encourage residents to form a circle around the pond at Muskocipi Park to demonstrate community spirit and maybe we can expand that around the reservoir if we get enough people. And entertainment will be again a mix of talented city employees and performers from the community. I got one more recommendation if I could. Sure, I think Council Tool, I think we've got, so so far the agenda is laid out a little differently than in the past, but I think we've got the motion for the minutes so far. So I think we need a motion for the theme the theme, and the program. Right, uh, and yeah, the program. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. So Council approved the love of the theme Love of Grand Prairie Day for the 2012 Municipal Government Day. Okay, thanks very much, Council O'Toole. So, a motion to approve the theme for the 2012 Municipal Government Day. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Council O'Toole. Okay, I got one more and then I'm done. 9.1.3 uh, Municipal Government Day Program. And the recommendation would be council to approve the 2012 Municipal Government Day program as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. So uh, sounds like a fantastic program that you and the committee have lined up for this year, and I certainly look forward to it. Any discussion or debate on Councillor O'Toole's motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <coughs> Thank you. And that motion carries. Thank you. And so we move on to 100th Anniversary Committee and Councillor Rice, I believe you had that one. I move that Council receive um, the minutes of the 100th Anniversary Committee of December 20th and February 7th. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Did anyone note any errors or omissions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councilor Rice, anything else that you want to uh, highlight? Just as an update, uh, Robert Stephen attended the meeting. Um, he is working on the subcommittee for the Cultural Capital Grant. He said the grant is being prepared, uh, that projects that would be eligible would include cultural and heritage events, developing new or expanding existing cultural and heritage festivals, and legacy building projects. Um, uh, Councillor O'Toole, of course, is working on uh, exploring alternate funding for some alternate events, and um, uh, the uh, history book RFP is being prepared. We're pleased to have Terry Head join us on the committee, and uh, 
they last week met to put together a page count recommendation um, for the RFP for the history book and uh, we'll be looking at, at finalizing the categories. Um, a community play is being uh, developed um, with Annie at the college and Mr. Wayne Ailing, and uh, we're looking at, at many things. It's getting uh, the homecoming, uh, some plans are starting to take place, um, and it was determined that the homecoming should be uh, free and inclusive for all families. So it's becoming critical that we get some more money out of council. Um, <laughs> one of the difficulties um, with the Cultural Capitals grant in looking at other municipalities who have received the designation, uh, one of them received it um, in Calgary, I think, received notification they had been chosen in December of the year prior to their year. Um, and so it, there's a whole leap of faith required uh, in terms of this grant. So uh, the, the committee is proceeding um, and pretty excited about the number of things we could do. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, so we'll move on from there to the Public Works Committee from February 7th. And Councillor Radburn, I believe you're going to handle that one for us. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Given. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, move Council to receive the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held February 7th, 2012, with a couple of uh, changes that I've uh, shared with, uh, with Jeanette. One is on uh, page 2 under the 68th Avenue traffic study, the last sentence. Uh, before the motion, installing signals at 68th Avenue and Knowledge Way East will not be required until such time as the road is widened to four lanes. The, Again, the minutes page the two of the minutes, 2.3, 68th Avenue traffic study, last sentence. Okay, that was just a catch. We had talked about... Uh, to other locations we're receiving lights and so this was the explanation for why the third one wasn't needed. And finally in 2.4, just uh, I basically uh, suggested the change of uh, Ms. K. Donnelly, Engineering Service Manager, reported to Committee on Engineering Services um, Work Projects Update and Anticipated Projects and Work in 2012. Something like that that was just a mix up in terms of uh, from a previous uh, agenda item. Okay, thanks very much, Thank Councillor Radburn, for those catches. Uh, and so we have a motion to adopt the minutes as amended. Uh, as Councillor Radburn noted, any other errors or omissions? Anyone noted? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote on that set of minutes. Thank you. And that motion carries, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, I move Council approve a request to extend the period for subdivision approval and endorsement for subdivision application Z2008-0016 BT North NW 11-71-6-W6 and Plan 032-1859 Lot 1 Block 1 for an additional six months to expire on August 7, 2012. Um, thank you, August 17, 2012. Um, this change uh, was uh, supported by committee because uh, it was the result of a change in process for a utility company, and that's affected the uh, developer's ability to meet the... Uh, they ha had received a two-month extension, so it's being extended further uh, because of uh, this, uh, I guess, complication in the process. Thank okay. you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Councillor Rabern, I believe the subdivision Grand Banks, is it supposed to be starting this spring? Is that known to Council? Uh, I believe the intentions are going to be starting on this, aren't they? They were. Um, they were. Uh, this this extension may carry that a little later than the spring. Kevin. Okay. okay. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council Award Focus, the Engineering Services Contract for the 2012-2014 Sidewalk Replacement Program project in the amount of 
249, excluding GST, as the highest qualified company to perform the work, and that the funding uh, be allocated from the 2012-2014 sidewalk replacement program. Um, a, a bit of a context here. Uh, there were five bids received. Two did not meet the uh, technical requirements. Uh, of the other three, um, focus was evaluated as the uh, as the um, the highest evaluated bid, and thus the recommended uh, firm to provide the service. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Radburn, was there anything else that you wanted to highlight from that sentiment? Yeah, just one other, um, um, I guess, highlight from the, uh, uh, from the meeting that uh, I guess our community may be interested in. Um, we did receive some information relative to the 68th Avenue traffic study. Um, and that study basically has, uh, has uh, indicated, uh, recommended, that tra traffic signals are required at both 68, 68th Avenue and Knowledge Way West and 68th Avenue and Kateri Drive. And uh, the good news is that funding is available in the 2000 budget for both of those uh, projects. And so uh, uh, they'll be proceeding with those projects uh, uh, immediately. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. So that would bring us to um, 9.4, the Community Development Committee, Councillor Crokin. Look at that. All the work that's had to be done is on the left side that doesn't have any microphones. These guys that have microphones on the right-hand side have got it easy so far, right? Eh? Councillor Crokin? Thank you very much, Mayor Kevin. I move that uh, Council receive the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting held on February the 7th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Crokin? Yes, uh, Mayor Gibbon, just uh, a couple of words on that. This isn't a new request, the Grand Prairie Minor uh, Baseball Funding Request. There was a little miscommunication uh, from the committees that uh, the minor baseball funding at $60,000 a year for 2012, 13, and 14 was in the budget. So this isn't new money. And it is coming from the future expenditure, expenditures reserve. So it's just uh, putting it back in. It was in, but then uh, with communication, it fell out. No, we're just putting it back in. Okay. So we're going to make a motion on that topic at all, or? It's, so it's <laughs> we sure could. <laughs> Uh, I would move that we uh, approve the uh, minor baseball funding request for 60000 a year for 2012, 13, and 14 to be reinstated into the budget, funding to come from the uh, future expenditures reserve. Thank, thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Any discussion or debate on the motion? And as Council remember, this is one where a delegation came forward to let us know about uh, the the error, and so Council and administration, or so administration is... Uh, Found a way to correct that. Any any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Croken, did you have anything else from that set of minutes that you wanted to highlight? No, thank you, uh, Mayor Gibbon. Th thanks very much, Councillor Croken. So that would bring us to the Protective Services Committee. Oh, back to the right side, Councillor Wong. Yes, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Protective Services Committee meeting held February 14th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes or any errors or omissions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Good thing Dan was a tiger. Thank you. Long night. <laughs> I move that Council approve. Oh, sorry, did you. Uh, Yes, no, please sorry. can continue yes. on there. Council I move the council approve the renewal of the fire dispatch agreement with the county of Grand Prairie for a five-year term. And in speaking to this, Mayor Given, uh, this is just a renewal of an existing agreement with the uh, standard fee schedule and the up-to-date census information for the county. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong. I move that Council approve the new agreement for the Town of Manning for the provision of fire dispatch services for a five-year term. 
They are a new municipality that's going to join our uh, fire dispatch uh, services. This uh, makes our Grand Prairie dispatch services the largest uh, area covered by any dispatch, and I think that that's uh, that, that's something that we can give kudos to our uh, fire department for um, being able to handle that capacity and uh, doing an excellent job at that. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. And uh, Councillor Wong, was there anything else from that set of minutes that you wanted to highlight? Uh, the only other thing on the agenda was the uh, firefighters from our fire department that are going to Roatan, Honduras, to offer their expertise in a Train the Trainer program. Uh, the firefighters are being um, sponsored to go. Their flights are being paid by the Rotary Clubs of Grand Prairie, and their accommodations are being paid for by Chris Robbins Training and Consulting Services. Uh, the firefighters are using their own time to take part in this program. Uh, I believe this speaks to the high quality of training that our firefighters have, and we should be proud of their contribution that they're making in a developing nation. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Um, that would bring us to our additional items, and Councillor Radburn, would you want to handle those on behalf of uh, Councillor Gustafson, 9.6.1? Yes, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I would move Council approve RFP 02-552-12 multi-year engineering consultant services for the period 2012-2014 be awarded to Barstow Laners Ketchum Engineering and Survey Limited in the amount of $1,440,670 excluding GST and that funding be allocated from the 2012-2014 road rehabilitation overlay roads resurfacing and the 105th Avenue rehab programs. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor Wong? Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. I understand the controversy here with uh, the spread being so thin, and this has happened to us in the past. Um, however, I'm, I think I'm, we're pretty much forced to accept the, the findings of, our, of the committee that, was, that selected this proponent. Um, I believe that in the past, I, well, I, I do remember Barstow Laners and Ketchum losing several of these things by a thin a margin as well. So it does turn around and come back to you one, you know, sometime in the future. And uh, you know, I I would encourage the rest of council to uphold this decision. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong, Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I, I too, speaking of Councillor Wong, I, I support this because uh, the last few projects they were within budget. But as well, the cost rating of it has been increased for 30, 40 percent. So it was looked at, but it was the technical part. And uh, as far as I can see, that there's uh, they were doing an outstanding job. So I'll be voting yes for it. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor McLean. Councilor Radburn. Just if I could close, is it appropriate now? Uh, is any there other? any further discussion or debate? I don't see anybody else. Okay. Thank you. So, Councillor Auburn. So, might. just uh, in terms of uh, the committee's uh, discussions today, uh, the majority of uh, committee felt that um, uh, the integrity of the process has been maintained and not compromised. Um, we have confidence in our staff's work uh, to provide the recommendation. Uh, council has uh, at times intervened if, uh, if indeed the uh, the budget, the cost was out of whack. Uh, uh, admin feels that this is a, a competitive. Uh, a competitive bid, and obviously cost was a significant part of the uh, uh, the evaluation of each of the bids. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, so uh, we'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, Councillor Radburn. There's an additional item there. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council award tender T fifty two dash five five two dash. One one for the Hundredth Avenue Bridge rehabil Rehabilitation, Westbound Lanes. I guess it is to concrete USL GP Inc. in the amount of two million thirty four thousand two hundred thirty five, excluding GST, as the lowest qualified bidder, and that funding be allocated from the Hundredth Avenue Bridge Rehab Program, and further that the additional funding in the amount of six hundred eighty four thousand two hundred thirty five be allocated from the two thousand ten road rehab program, the 2010 sidewalk program, and the unallocated MSI funding to cover the additional cost of construction. So we, I guess we do this as, uh, as one, uh, one motion, unless somebody wanted to split it. 
Um, again, we had seven tenders, and they ranged from uh, a 2.034 million to 5.5 million. So we had quite a range. This was the lowest tender. It was, uh, as you probably have noted, uh, greater than the budget amount. That's why the arrest of the motion uh, indicates other funding service uh, sources for this to happen. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Edburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor McLean. Uh, just have, thank you, Mary Gay. I got a question for Councillor Radburn because I was just out the other day walking underneath that bridge and I was like, oh my goodness, it looks like it's falling apart. Um, if this was the past tonight, when would they start uh, working on this bridge to bring it up to par? Councillor well, Radburn? Yeah, maybe that? Matt uh, or somebody can uh, help with that. Mr. Hinton? So just for those that might not have heard, because uh, Matt doesn't have a microphone, uh, so uh, within the next couple of months, this spring, and uh, the approval to proceed is dependent on a couple of other agencies, and I would guess that there's fisheries or Alberta environment, considering it's a bridge over a water course. Right. Okay. But I think, too, uh, Councillor McLean's, McLean's comments uh, appropriate in the sense that we brought this forward today rather than waiting another couple of weeks for the very reason that it's a... Uh, it's a concern uh, for safety, and uh, we want to move as quickly as we can on the project. Okay. Thanks very much. Councillor Rice. Does the project include aprons on either side of the bridge where, where we clear snow and nothing grows? Mr. Hinton? No was the answer, Councillor Rice. Okay. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbs. Just one more question, probably Councillor Radburn or Administration have it. Completion, are they going to keep one lane, do one side, then do the other? Uh, traffic, uh, what's going to happen there? That's a pretty congested area. So, uh, Matt, if it sounds like it might be a little bit longer answer, if you'd like to maybe just come to the presenter's table and make it a little bit easier. You can say it in your own words rather than having to worry about me repeating it. Um, depending upon the schedule of the contractor, he'll di he'll um, they'll dictate where th what their plans are when we actually have a pre-construction meeting. So there is options of it keeping one lane open, or the possibility of closing the bridge down. We haven't worked that out entirely with the contractor yet until we actually have an award from council. We don't want to discuss that until that time. So once we have a pre-construction meeting, we'll be able to inform council what their plans are and how they plan on accommodating traffic. So, in completion, would this run, if it passes tonight, would this run into summer? Would it be done within a month and a half? I'd, I'd have to like, look at their schedule first if, if I can, before I can answer that question, how, how what their schedule is to complete the work. And so. It's got to be done by this. So. Yeah, I, yeah uh, Council McLean, your concern certainly warranted. It's an important project. Uh, I have a feeling, though, with the scope of the project, that it probably wouldn't happen in a matter of a couple of weeks. So, but. No, fair enough. So uh, administration will probably bring an update to the appropriate committee, public works, or wherever. Okay. Thanks very much, Matt. Thanks for coming down. Councillor Rice, uh, can you uh, catch your, your microphone there? Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, any further discussion or debate on the motion to award uh, this tender for the rehab of 100th Avenue Bridge? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, and that finishes all our items of business. So we had no items of correspondence this afternoon. Um, the delegation business, I believe, was uh, addressed with item 9.6.1. Both of our delegations were speaking to that. Uh, we have no notices of motion, and so that will bring us to council member reports. And we'll start with uh, the Grand Prairie Airport Commission, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much. Um, on uh, <coughs> February 16th, we had the Airport Commission meeting. And uh, some of the topics that we discussed were improvements to the arrivals area. And that was brought on by Councillor Helen Rice at the last meeting that we attended. Uh, some of the ideas that were put forward uh, were to decorate the outside of the tarmac. And according to the airline uh, and the, the board that looks after traffic, uh, that can't be done because of airline obligations and safety. So nothing can be done on the tarmac area. 
but once we get into the building, that little walkway through, uh, there is some talk and some ideas already being passed around through the airport uh, uh, staff that uh, maybe some paintings, maybe some artwork, stuff that uh, will be secured to the walls. Uh, another item that uh, comes up, it's uh, security. So items that are put into that area uh, have to meet requirements for security reasons. Uh, the next uh, item that was brought up also was the uh, business workstations. And uh, as mentioned before, the cafeteria upstairs has got uh, free internet use. And uh, so uh, there'll probably be some signage put up that if anybody wants to use uh, the internet that the uh, cafe area will have uh, areas there. Uh, it's nice to have a cup of coffee and put your books out on the table and stuff, do your work. Uh, but also in the secured section, once you've checked in through security, there's uh, some talk and discussion of maybe putting a shelf in with some plugins, just big enough to put your laptop on. So we're looking at a funding source in the in the pull uh, in the uh, airport uh, budget. So both of those are going to be worked upon, and they're they're taking it quite serious this time. And I can think. I'm, I'm thinking that by the time we have our next meeting, there will be some projects already uh, come up with some ideas on how we're going to accomplish those. We also discovered the or dis discussed our audited financial statements and uh, marketing and development. So those are some things that uh, the airport commission talked about. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, Councillor Rice, I see you have a question. Uh, is the airport uh, authority going to have a display on Municipal Government Day? Uh, might be quite interesting if they did. I, you know, I know that traffic has increased amazingly. Yes, we had 383,000 3 passengers go through the doors at our airport this year. And it is the highest increase in volume, percentage-wise, in Canada. 17% increase, I think it was. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Right. Hey, thanks very much, Councillor Tool. And so, Councillor Tool, since you've got the microphone, do you want to carry on with the library board? Yes, uh, I got the library board here, and uh, some of the items that we talked about was our goal was reached uh, of getting 2.56 books per citizen in our library, which works out to 128,790 <laughs> books that are in that building most of the time. Uh, January... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I didn't count them all. Uh, let's see what else I got. Uh, the actual goal was 2.5, and we have a 2.56 rate. Does that account for the new population numbers? Uh, that's according to... 50,227, so we're, oh. we're down a little bit. Okay, programs are, the staff has been actively promoting a, a, a Mango, it's a language learning software. Many patrons are asking about it in response to our promotion. Uh, Mango station has been set up for the public to use by the public internet stations. So that's been a real, uh, real good thing to have there. Uh, we've been having musical interludes on Wednesdays during noon hours, and there have been a couple of sessions, and they've actually been pretty received quite well. Under some miscellaneous stuff that we talked about, uh, plans for an upcoming public library managers meeting and spring library meeting were discussed, and it uh, looks like we're going to have that in September 20th and 21st of this year in Grand Prairie. A RISE network was submitted as a proposal to the province to run a pilot project to extend the RISE video conference network to gauge future in interest and commitment in utilizing video conference services at public libraries throughout Alberta. Grand Prairie would be the part of a pilot project if the proposal is accepted. And uh, just a couple other things here. January marked the beginning of a new uh, session of weekly programs. Uh, we have events geared for children and families as well as the regular adult programs. And uh, for the third year in a row, the Children's Library has presented a Ch Chinese New Year program. This program was extremely well attended and gave participants the opportunity to learn about another culture. And uh, I got more, but I think we got enough there. So, 
I got one more, if you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> it's on the Philip J. Curry Museum. Sure. And uh, just uh, like to mention that Philip, uh, Dr. Phil Bell, has announced uh, a groundbreaking study on mummified dinosaur skin. And uh, if you want to know more about this, just punch in uh, Dr. Phil Bell and uh, on the website and you'll get all kinds of information about him. He has actually been asked to speak in China later on in November as a guest speaker. They're flying him at no cost and uh, it's something quite remarkable to have him based, based out of Grand Prairie here uh, to do a talk. So that's all I've got. Thank Great. you. Thanks very much, Councillor Tool. Councillor Radburn, I believe you had Grand Prairie Tourism Association. Thank you, Mary Given. Um, just quickly, we had a board meeting uh, February 9th. Uh, a few highlights. Uh, we're exploring a board leadership development session and a policy and bylaws revision in the next uh, a number of months. Um, DMF Steering Committee is uh, developing a marketing strategy for 2012, and we're in the midst of travel Alberta staffing applications that are due, I guess, mid-February, so that's probably happening as we speak. The other uh, topic of the agenda was the uh, VIC Information Center. We're looking at further space for, uh, to uh, to display uh, visitor information in the center in Center 2000. And uh, uh, the board is and administration. The new executive director uh, is uh, feel, feels that a present contract with the city for the visitor information uh, center is uh, a win-win. Uh, Contrary to um, past reports, um, we admin has uh, has basically stated to us that the monies that the uh, city is providing is covering costs uh, of that center, and the uh, the uh, tourism association receives a benefit in terms of when that person isn't uh, busy with visit information, they can do some uh, some clerical work for tourism. So, from the perspective of the board and admin of tourism, it's a, it's a very good partnership. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. And Councillor Wong, I believe you wanted to do Mighty Peace Watershed. Yes, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. It's been a while since I've reported on that. Uh, we had two meetings in the last month. Uh, the first on February 8th was a subcommittee meeting uh, discussing the Wapiti River Basin Info <laughs> Needs Study. Uh, this is a study that Alberta Environment and Water is recommending that it start right away. It's essentially a study of the current and future water licensing needs and its impact on water quality and quantity. The concern was that during low flow periods in the winter that uh, the water that's uh, available in the, in the Wapiti River uh, isn't really up to the levels that it should be. Uh, the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance will be participating in the development of the study and this could form the basis of our own integrated watershed management plan for the Wapiti River. Uh, the group is actually discussing that today, or they had discussed that today, but I had to leave to uh, take part in this city council meeting. Otherwise, I would have found out the results of whether or not they, they have chosen to do it, but I'll find out short en shortly enough. Uh, and in speaking about today's meeting on the 21st, we talked about our annual general meeting, which is scheduled for March 24th. It's going to be held at the Saw Ridge Inn and Conference Centre in Peace River. And we're encouraging anyone who's interested in or affected by the Peace River watershed to attend the meeting and get up-to-date information on our progress. Uh, just to, a reminder to everyone out there who's listening that a watershed includes the activities on the land that will affect water quality and quantity uh, as it pertains to drinking water and the aquatic ecosystems. So we're looking for people also to fill board member positions. So if you know of anyone who can commit some fairly involved or commit to some fairly involved meetings, uh, please have them get a hold of myself or anyone on the board. Thanks. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Uh, and Councillor Wong, do you want to start council member roundtable as well? Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. On Friday, February 10th, I brought greetings to the 12th annual regional EMS wine fair. On Monday the 13th, I participated in the policy review committee meeting. Also on the 13th, the Wapiti Corridor Planning Society had a working meeting to review the uh, multi-use plan that we're developing. On February 15th, I was present at two open houses, one for the Muscassipi Park uh, Spray Park 
designs and the other one for the 92nd Street and the 100th Avenue Transportation Open House. On Thursday, February 16th, I attended the Stantec GP office opening at Center 2000 and also brought greetings on behalf of the Mayor and Council to the Crime Prevention's Evening of Appreciation and Success at Basics. Uh, I just wanted to mention the uh, keynote speaker, Christy Morin. She talked about the Art on the Avenue project on 118th Avenue in Edmonton. And I think that serves as a really great example of what a community can do to uh, try to discourage crime from happening in their neighborhoods. Um, what we're doing all across our city, they've concentrated in one section of Edmonton, which has some real major problems in terms of uh, drug trafficking, uh, prostitution, and uh, gang violence and things like that. And they seem to be fairly successful at it. So I think that's a good model that we can go off of. Uh, on Friday, February 17th, I was at a tender opening at City Hall. Uh, Saturday, February 18th, I was at the official opening of the Aquaterra Tube Zone at Nighthawk Ski Hill. Did you ride the tube? <laughs> and I did. I was uh, one of the first people to ride down the hill. Um, and it was a lot of fun. It's going to be a great addition for recreation in this area. And that's all I have. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor Rice? I attended the War Brides uh, show and tea at the uh, Prairie Gallery, and it was really, really heartening to see the place was packed. It almost somebody had to leave before somebody else could get in. Uh, they had done a, a, a splendid job, and uh, the conversations were were flying thick and fast. There were no strangers in that room. It was it was really great. Um, I want. I attended the uh, Grand Prairie Tourism uh, Service Superstar Gala Awards evening, and congratulations to uh, all of their uh, all of their recipients of the awards. Uh, they're the frontline people that sure make our community a better place to visit. Want to add my congratulations to the Grand Prairie Community Garden who received a crime prevention award at their ceremonies. Uh, and and uh, it has to be pointed out that this project was a partnership uh, between uh, a committee from the Grand Prairie Garden Club and the City of Grand Prairie, uh, Grand Prairie City Departments, Transportation, Parks, Environmental Sustainability, um, and uh, the financial support that came from the TD Friends of the Environment Foundation, as well as the Take Part, Take Pride Committee, and the many, many people who donated funds, time, labor, and supplies, and making that a very successful project, and certainly one worthy of a Crime Prevention Award. So, um, Ad Council's congratulations to them. That's it. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor Monroe. Thanks, uh, Mayor Given. Uh, just uh, one event that I attended this time. I uh, uh, brought greetings on behalf of uh, Mayor Given and uh, the rest of City Council to the Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association, uh, their gala awards evening that Councillor Rice was just uh, discussing. And uh, once again, I'd like to just echo that uh, the awards that were given out to the service superstars, uh, these really are uh, well-deserving folks. Uh, there was a, a number of them there. I think we gave out, it was close to a dozen awards uh, from various industries, everything from uh, retail or office, restaurant category, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, two points of interest uh, with it is that uh, one of the recipients, uh, uh, Maria Serum, uh, I mean, she's a service superstar at the L Spa, but of course she got her training at a local restaurant here in town. Local pizza restaurant, that is. Uh, <laughs> and then there was a young fellow from uh, the uh, county of Grand Prairie, or pardon me, the uh, Country, Roads. Country Roads RV Park. Uh, I think he uh, said he was 10 or 12 years old. 12 years old and uh, really been helping out there on the, in the family business. So it was great. Thank you. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks, Councillor Monroe. Councillor Crogan. Thanks, Mayor Given. Um, on February the 10th, I attended the uh, EMS Wine Fair at the Tech Center. It was uh, an enjoyable evening, fundraiser. On 
February the 11th, I also, the evening, I also attended the Big Hearts for Big Kids, the concert fundraiser at the jackpot. And I do believe it was in the area of about $108,000 or $110,000. You probably will. For Sunrise House, that was a, an excellent evening. On the uh, 16th, uh, I attended the open house for the opening of uh, Stantec uh, announcing their new office. Uh, kudos to Mr. Frank Scavage. Uh, Friday was um, family day. I enjoyed it immensely and uh, did a lot of uh, exercising because there was no parking left at the multiplex. It was really nice to see them completely packed in there. So. Uh, and today, I was very, uh, very proud to be uh, on the uh, chairman of a very progressive community development committee. We had a fire alarm. I kept everybody uh, uh, very quiet and calm, and we left and uh, gathered at the mustard point. And uh, I'm proud to say that we did get five points out of five. So uh, I'm, I'm proud of our staff. So that was everything. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin, the only chair that leads his committee to the mustard point. <laughs> Councillor Radmer? Right. Thank you, Mary Given. I want to dispel the rumor that John headed out uh, quickly before anyone else left, but no. <laughs> February 11th, I also attended the GPRTA Server Superstar Awards Gala. I, I found it uh, my first, uh, and uh, I thought it uh, was a very classy event, and I think it was very well appreciated by those superstars uh, uh, recognized that night. Uh, February 13th, I uh, actually uh, drove with Brian Glavin and Ainsley uh, Lamontagne to uh, White Court. Uh, they're looking at uh, maybe doing some tourism initiatives on for the Highway 43 corridor. So that uh, was a, a short meeting, uh, but uh, there may be a way. I think they're looking at developing more of an association. I don't think uh, we're interested in that since we have our own association. But uh, in terms of projects, uh, we would be uh, certainly open to... Uh, to explore and partnering uh, with particular projects relative to that. February 15th, as others, I attended both uh, the Spray Park Open House and the Transportational Functional Studies Open House. Um, it was good to see uh, the members of the Elks at the Spray Park Open House. I was able to chat with them and uh, one of the gentlemen there, actually I think this summer, is becoming the national leader of the Elks and as he was explaining to me, he'll be able to talk about Grand Prairie uh, across Canada, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, Airport Commission meeting the 16th, Stantec office opening, uh, reception and the Crime Prevention Awards, uh, celebration of success. I uh, just want to commend uh, Dan on his uh, good uh, good words from on behalf of Council, and uh, and Karen Garropy uh, and her team, just uh, they uh, work very hard, and, uh, and um, they are leaders in crime prevention across uh, Canada, and I just I can't say enough about uh, when we go to FCM and AUMA uh, and their presentations relative to crime prevention, I always come back and I say, you could have done that, Karen, quite easily, because we have the, uh, the expertise uh, and the experience uh, to share with others. Uh, I attended the Aquaterra Tube Zone official opening as well. Uh, I'm sorry, Helen. I used my wrist. My spastic fall in January on my wrist, so I didn't uh, chance it, but I will, I will in the future go, with my, uh, go down with my grandkids. Um, and uh, I attended the Multiplex Grand Opening yesterday, and it was, it was, it was packed. Um, and, uh, but I think a uh, good time was had by all, by all. And I think there were a number of people who probably were there for one, one of the f first times because their staff were giving tours as this was actually happening. And so I think that's great profile for our facility and uh, bodes well for their participation and uh, coming to the multiplex in the future. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, on February 6th, I was not at the uh, council meeting that we had that, that night. I was actually in Edmonton uh, with the board of directors for the Pipestone Creek Dinosaur Initiative. We met with uh, Minister Heather Kimchuk, she's the culture minister, and Jack Hayden, tourism minister. And it was a very well, uh, well, we were allowed to 20 minutes and it took an hour and 20 minutes to get through. And uh, when you look at it that way, they didn't kick us out. And uh, they actually excused themselves because they needed to go to a meeting. But uh, I'm gonna tell you, I think we have a, a very optimistic about that event. On February 11th, I attended the Library Board Basics uh, session. It's for trustees and staff, and it was held in Peace River. 
And I drove back and uh, picked up my wife, and we went to the Big Hearts for Big Kids concert fundraiser for that night as well. It went very well attended and uh, got good seats and uh, good food, good people around. And uh, <clears throat> on February 14th, I attended the regular library board meeting, and it was held in the Peace Library building. And uh, there were some new board members that uh, got to see the new facility. And it was explained in detail on how the Peace Library system works to the new staff members. On the 15th, I was also at the Water Park uh, presentation at Muskocipi Park in the 100th, an 100th Avenue Design and Public House, uh, open house. And it was a good presentation by the staff. Well, uh, op opportunity to put your input in. On the 16th, I was at the Airport Commission meeting. I uh, went to the Stantec Open House and also attended the Crime Prevention Awards Night. And uh, there was many great people given well-deserved awards. And kudos to the people that are working in our Crime Prevention Department. On the 17th, I attended uh, Perky McCullough's funeral. Um, I know there's been lots of news about the f uh, Perky in the... In the uh, uh, lots of comments made the last couple of weeks about Perky, and uh, she was dear to my heart. I spent some time with her on the uh, Pursuit of Excellence Committee and a number of events going back beyond or be earlier than uh, 2000, uh, just different events that she was uh, part of and I happen to be part of as well. I'm going to miss her dearly. And on the 20th, which was yesterday, I also attended the Multiplex uh, Grand Opening and... Uh, uh, enough's been said for both of us, or three of us here. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor Tool. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, on February 10th, I was lucky enough to be, uh, on behalf of the Mayor and Council, to present some uh, medals and certificates for Alberta Sur Emergency Service Medals, the Center 2000. And there was a few of them uh, that were there, six or seven individuals that got uh, medals. They're a polished nickel, one side wall rose, one side Alberta shield. And very proud. Uh, there was a 12 year service, but one fellow from Priest River had 25 years service. So it didn't have to be 12, you could have been a lot more. As well, uh, th there was a shock for Dr. Lewis, who's been involved with the EMS program for almost 40 years. They presented him with um, a medal and certificate, and he went back to the early stages of EMS from funeral homes to uh, St. John's to where they are now a part of the health uh, care system. So they've really done a big turn in 40 years and he was quite proud and for him to speak like that, he spoke from the heart. So I was very proud to be there on behalf of Council and the Mayor. As well as February 10th, I attended, uh, I believe Councillor Crokin was there and uh, Councillor Wong for the Wine Fair for EMS. And I believe they matched or beat last year's what they brought in for uh, put into the foundation. Uh, February 15th, I also attended the Mississippi Park uh, Spray Park uh, design, and I think it's going to be wonderful. I'll just the one area I picked, the community gets to pick where maybe it might go, and I'm hoping it goes in the area that I marked by the X, and I said just to make sure if there's an expansion to this park that the, actually the water line is appropriate enough, and uh, in five or six years if we got to expand it, that it, it could be there to do. Uh, February 16th, I also attended the Stantec Open House at Center 2000. And on February 20th, um, Multiplex uh, official opening. Uh, I think I've been using it quite a bit, my wife and family. So we, um, it was a great day. My wife, my daughters, Kendra and Kara, we both went. They got their faces painted. And the one thing I take away from there besides the pool and the amazing facility is the gym area. You can go in that area and you can be sitting down having a coffee, a second cup, and you'll see uh, volleyball go on, then it'll switch to basketball, then it'll go to badminton. And if you're there early enough in the morning, you'll see mothers in their strollers with their children, or not in the, but their children in the strollers and going around and working out. So it's multi-use and really used well. So thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Um, so uh, on Thursday, the 9th of February, I attended at Derek Taylor School. They were having their student convention, so it's actually like a conference for students where they can pick sessions. They were looking at passion. I know there are a number of City of Grand Prairie employees. Uh, Mr. Olinger was one of them who were presenting, and uh, I had a chance to be the opening keynote speaker uh, for the convention where I shared uh, with students the 
uh, importance of um, uh, ex taking opportunities when they present themselves, accepting a little bit of risk when you do so, and to make sure that you do those both in pursuit of your passion. And so it was uh, really great to see. While I was there, I had a chance to ask the students if any of them had been to the multiplex, and uh, I would have to say that it was every one of them had been to the multiplex. There were actually uh, three opportunities I had to be with students from different schools, which I'll, I'll mention, and every time I've asked, every hand has gone up. So it's been uh, pretty gratifying to see that the community is getting out there. Um, the next day, Friday, February 10th, I was in Edmonton for the Northern Alberta Mayors and Reeves Caucus, uh, hosted by the City of Edmonton and Mayor Mandel. Um, discussion focused on local food production, the Enbridge Northern Gateway Pipeline, and we also discussed uh, a couple of uh, subcommittees to look at specific issues that affect Northern Alberta communities, and I'm going to be chairing a committee on labour market issues, and so I uh, had a meeting later on after I returned with the uh, Economic Development Manager and uh, the Chamber of Commerce to see what sort of uh, high-level issues that group might uh, like to bring forward so that we can lobby the, uh, the province on those. Uh, the next day I was back in Grand Prairie and attended the Big Hearts for Big Kids fundraiser for Sunrise House that was previously mentioned. Um, I don't think anybody mentioned her name, but a, a big round of congratulations have to go to, to Neil, who organized that. A fantastic musical performer, uh, but obviously with a huge heart. And um, the fundraiser is uh, her brainchild. And for such a young lady, she's had a huge impact in the community. The first year the fundraiser raised about $20,000. The second year it was about $60,000 and, and this time around it was $104,000. So absolutely amazing growth uh, coming from the idea of uh, one individual in the community and that's uh, fantastic to see. Um, uh, on Thursday the 16th I attended at Crystal Park School where they were also having a student convention. I think they liked the idea so much from Derek Taylor that they decided to duplicate it there and there I got to be the closing keynote speaker uh, and uh, shared a very similar message with the students there. Um, and then Friday the 17th I was again in Edmonton for the AUMA Mayor's Caucuses uh, for cities and uh, the AUMA discussed the, a number of strategy items as well as uh, some water issues and a number of other items. And as other council members noted, uh, the grand opening of the multiplex, uh, my wife and I and Mila also attended and uh, fantastic to see. One comment that I've had, uh, people are certainly grateful for the new services and lease uh, leaseholders that have opened up in the multiplex. Uh, one comment that I had was from somebody who said, do you know how difficult it is to go to that running track with Wana Waffle open. They said, it's, it's crazy. It's like trying to run through a donut factory. And I said, no, I said, you know what, Grand Prairie, Grand Prairie residents will have the best willpower of all Northern Albertans uh, by the time we're done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, or not, come on now. Um, this morning I had an opportunity to uh, greet some students from Mother Teresa Catholic School, uh, give them a little bit of insight about what City Council does and uh, a little bit of a view of our council technology. At the time I was telling them that it all worked, but uh, that's unfortunately we, <laughs> we uh, it's good that they uh, maybe didn't see the, all the behind the scenes. And that's all I have to report. So with that, we'll adjourn our meeting. Thank you very much.